the custom curves at the bottom here. At the bottom left, you have the blacks. Now on the top right, you have the whites. So if we were to take the whites and drag them towards the middle, left to right, you could see how more of the grays get introduced and they end up being white. Same thing with the blacks. If we drag it through to the middle, left to right, a lot of the grays on that end of the spectrum will end up turning black. Now if we lift up towards the middle, top to bottom, you can see how the blacks start to become gray. Same thing with the whites. If we drag that to the middle, top to bottom, then a lot of the whites are going to start turning gray. And oftentimes people will make what's called an S-curve. You push up the whites, you bring down the blacks a little bit, and it resembles an S. And that basically brings contrast into your photos. So a lot more of the gray will be white, a lot more of the darker gray will be black, and then that will just add contrast to your photo. Now one of the first things I wanted to show you guys is if you were to set a point here on the custom curves, you can just click anywhere to set a point. But as you might have seen, it moves a little and it adjusts it before you even get a chance to adjust it yourself. So in this case, what we can do is let's go ahead and come up here and reset it. And we'll hold down the shift button. As you can see now, if we click, everything remains stable. And this way you can keep that diagonal line and you can make the adjustments yourself without inadvertently moving anything. Now for the next tip, let's say you wanted to darken the footage a little bit. You think it's overly too bright. So you drag down the darks a little bit and then you add another point because you didn't want to necessarily bring down the highs. So you bring it back up and you think it's back to where it used to be as far as that diagonal line is concerned. So what you can do now is hold option and just make sure that that's the case. And actually that point will snap to the line. So again, hold option, we'll bring it up a little bit, it will snap to the line, and now you'll be back to normal where you'll have that diagonal line. And of course you can move anywhere on that diagonal line and it will stay attached as long as you're still holding the option or the alt key. Another thing that you can do is come over here and we're gonna unlink all the colors. So now this way we can adjust the colors individually. So let's click on red. We'll go ahead and lift that up, introduce more red into the image. We'll drag down the blue and now the footage is a little more orange. Let's say we don't like that. So we'll come over here to the intensity slider. Instead of the top, which will reset everything and you'll have to start over, come over here to the intensity slider and now blue is brought back to normal. One thing you do have to keep in mind, however, is everything is relative. So in other words, we'll bring up everything together. We'll unlink everything now. I'm going to reset the green and you can see now it's actually brought some magenta because the opposite of green is magenta. But as you see, all the other ones are where that white line is and the green is actually below, which is how the curve works. Top left, you introduce more of the color. Bottom right, you introduce the opposite color. Now a great function is that we can isolate exactly what we want to adjust using the qualifier. So we'll go up there and as you can see, we'll pick that area. We'll come over here to the qualifier, click on the area that we want. And if you look at the curves now, we have a point. Now in this example, we'll go ahead and lift up that point. Now of course it will adjust everything with it, but at least you can isolate the images that you specifically want to bring up and have everything else fall where it may. Now another thing we can look at is bringing down overblown highlights. Now you can look at this footage, let's go ahead and zoom in on this footage a little bit. And clearly we know these are bright whites. So what we'll do is go to the top right corner of the custom curves and then we can bring down the whites a little bit. And as you can see, they're somewhat turning into that milky gray. Go ahead and toggle this on and off and you can see how it goes from bright. And it, it does affect the whole scene of course, because as you can see that diagonal line affects the other ranges too. So what we can do is add another point, we'll hold option, drag, and then bring everything back up to that line. So just so we can come back later and kind of compare, let's go ahead, right click, grab still, and now we have it in our gallery. We'll come down here, go ahead and reset the custom curves, and now we're going to use a different technique. So let's come in here, zoom into that area again, and let's go ahead and adjust, in the soft clip area, let's adjust the high amount. And if you look at the waveform on the right, what we're doing is compressing the highlights. So as opposed to just bringing everything down, we're just taking those highest luma values, the highest brightness values, and we're compressing them together. And now if we were to toggle this on and off, you can see the rest of the footage really isn't touched. And the brightness is brought down a little bit, but it's not really that milk color. It's not really turning gray. So let's go ahead and grab another still, and we'll do a little side by side between the two techniques. Now this is with bringing the adjustment down with the curves. And you can see how it sort of washes out the footage. And if we click on the other one, now we have our contrast back and it's not as much of a severe change 
from the brightest parts of the image to anything that's not as bright. Now the qualifier that we used before where we can actually select the region that we want, you can do the same thing in the other curves. So let's go ahead and we'll look at that sign and it's basically a teal color. So what I'll do is come down, click on teal, and you can see where it's selected. As you can see, it's chosen somewhat of a wide area, which is fine because that will smooth out the transition into the other colors. However, if you want it to be very specific, let's go ahead and come into the footage, make sure we're on qualifier, and select the region that we want. And as you can see, it's very specific about the color that it chooses. So now we can come in here and we're on the hue versus hue now, so we can go ahead and make the adjustments. We drag it down and now everything starts to turn that purple color as opposed to that cyan color. Now there is one thing to keep in mind. Let's go over here and if we wanted to adjust that further, let's say we wanted to adjust the saturation. Let's go ahead and add another serial node. We'll go into hue versus sat. We can come up here, qualify the color again, and you can see now it's more in that blue area and we can make our adjustments to the saturation. The thing that you have to keep in mind is that if you do this on the same exact node as opposed to making a second node, let's go ahead and click on that area and you can see we're back to the cyan. Now you could still make the adjustments the same exact way. You can still make the adjustments as far as adding saturation, decreasing saturation. But again, if you do it on the same node, you just have to keep in mind it's the same color that it used to be, not what you've adjusted on another curve. So thanks for watching. I hope those tips helped. The first video of the year, and I do have a lot more lined up. I actually have them pre-recorded, so you'll start to see a lot more. This is going to be a very exciting year. There's a couple announcements I'm going to make. You'll see those in upcoming videos. And I'll talk to you guys soon. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Check out a couple of my links in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.